hands and wrists. The examination of the hands and wrists is usually performed to assess them for problems caused by arthritis. Keep in mind the general principles of joint examination. Look, feel, move, measure and compare with the other side and assess joint function. Begin as ever with the general inspection. If the patient has walked into the room, look for signs of arthritis in other joints that affect his or her mobility. To the bed for me, please. Look for signs of systemic disease. Just pop your hands on top of the pillow. Now get the patient to sit over the edge of the bed and place the hands on a pillow. Now look in more detail at the forearms and dorsal and then palmar aspects of the hands. Take time to look at the skin and nails, and then at each of the Just joints in turn, at the small muscles of the hands and for scars. Note deformity of the architecture of the hands. The changes caused by rheumatoid arthritis are very characteristic. Look for the typical changes of osteoarthritis, bony swellings at the base of the distal interphalangeal joints, Heberden's nodes. Before beginning to feel the joints, ask if they are painful or sore Do you anywhere. Have any pain in your hands or your wrist feel the all? skin for the tethering that occurs in patients with scleroderma. Start the joint examination with gentle palpation of each of the joints of the hands and of the carpal joints. Feel for tenderness and watch the patient's face for any signs that the examination is uncomfortable. Then the metacarpal and proximal and distal interphalangeal joints. Now turn the hands over and examine the palmar surfaces. Feel for the rough movement of thickened palmar tendons by asking the patient to open and shut the hand. Open and close your hand for me. Now yeah, test for median nerve entrapment in the carpal tunnel. Here with your hands. That's great. Ask the patient to flex both wrists for 30 seconds. The test is positive if tingling occurs in the distribution of the median nerve. Do you feel any tingling in your hands at all? No. Great. Now I'd like you to put your hands together like that. No. Now test active movements of the hands and wrists. Okay. And that's fine. Now I'll just... First, wrist flexion and extension. Now go on to thumb movements. Test extensions you first. Your hands over for me. Now, just keeping your hand nice and still, push your thumb out against my finger. Now, abduction. This time, point your thumb towards the ceiling and hold it there. 
Excellent. Same on this side. Put it towards the ceiling. Don't let me push it down. Mm -hmm. Now adduction. Keeping my thumb back up, pointing to the ceiling. Now this time push down against my finger. Mm -hmm. And the same on this side. Push down. Good. Now opposition. Now this time I'd like you to touch your that little finger with your thumb. Push it. That's right. And don't let me pull it away. Look for limitation of these movements or signs of discomfort caused by them. Very good. Okay. Next, test metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal movements. As a screening test, ask the patient to make a fist so not, and then straighten out the fingers. Tight fist. Hard as you can. Okay, and now Then test the fingers. fingers individually. If active flexion of one or more fingers seems to be reduced, test the superficialis and profunda flexor tendons. Just holding this, holding your fingers straight, try and bend your, the, the tip of the finger down. Hold the proximal finger joint extended and instruct the patient okay, to bend the tip, the tip of the, the finger. Of the, finger. the distal finger tip will flex if the flexor profundus is intact. And this time? Very good. Then hold the other fingers extended to reactivate the profundus and check flexion of one finger. Yep. Inability indicates the superficialis is unable to work. Now test hand function. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like you to uh, grip my fingers very tightly in your hands. Grip strength is tested by getting the patient to squeeze two of the examiner's fingers. Don't let me pull them out. Very good. Okay. Key grip is the grip with which a key is held between the pops of the thumb Take and this forefinger. Take key um, in your um, hand that you would normally use uh, and take as if you're going to open the door. Pretend my fingers here are the lock in the door and turn it as hard as you can. Very good. Opposition strength is where the patient opposes the thumb and individual fingers. Make this movement here and don't let me pull my fingers through. Firm as you can. The difficulty with which these can be forced Very apart good. is assessed. Finally, a practical test, such as asking the patient to undo a button or write with a pen, should oh, be performed. Undo a button on the top of you. Examination of the joints of the hand is not complete without a search for rheumatoid nodules on the extensive surfaces of the forearms. Remember that a neurological examination of the hands for peripheral nerve abnormalities is necessary to complete the assessment.